Here I'm going to show you how to make automatically updating dependent drop-down list menus in Excel. It is a really cool feature and it works like this. I've got one drop-down menu over here, let's say department, and let us choose a department, how about world domination, and then let's go to a division, and the choices in this list are dependent upon this list over here. So we choose division, let's say world two, and now let's go to our source data and let's say that we want to add a mining division or department. So we do mining over here and then we go over here, mining, and let's say M1, M2, M3. Go over here to department and there we go. Mining is automatically added and for division M1, 2, and 3. And I'm going to show you every step required to make this. So don't worry if you're a beginner. Before we start, check the video description and click the link to Teach Excel so you can download the files for the tutorial and follow along. And make sure to subscribe and accept notifications so you can see all the new tutorials. All right, now if you download this file, this is what you're going to get. But we're going to create this from scratch on a new worksheet. And we're really only combining a couple different features. So the drop down list or menu is data validation. And this right here is a table. And we're going to use not really a trick, but kind of a trick to combine everything. And before we start, I do want to say that you can put this source data on another worksheet. So let's go to a completely blank worksheet and get started with this guy. Department will go here and division here. And now let's just copy some of this source data to make our life easy. I'm going to bring it over here and paste special values so we just get the text. And this is the first thing that you want to do, is to have a table of data. And this is what's going to appear in the first drop-down menu. So get this guy working and happy and everything good, and then we'll move to the next step. And what we're going to do for that is just click anywhere in this table, and then go to Insert, Table, or Control-T on the keyboard. And it is a good idea to have a header here. So departments is going to be our header for this table. So in here, I'm going to check my table has headers, hit OK. And we will now have a table format here. And a table is a special thing that gives us access to all sorts of cool features. But the coolest one is that when I add a new value down here to the bottom of it, it will update. So let's add another one. And you can see it updates the table. And it is that that is going to update our drop-down menu for us automatically. So let me back it up. And the next thing that you want to do with your table, so click in the table, is go to the Table Design tab. It might be called something different if you have an earlier version of Excel, but you'll have a special tab up here for the table. And then go over here to the left where we have Table Name. And by default, it's going to be something like table one, table two, table three. You can leave it like that, but it's going to make life easier if you give it a descriptive name here. We are going to call it departments. You can't have any spaces or any funky characters. Give it a very simple name without spaces, hit enter. And make sure it is a unique name. So I've already named the table on the other tab, departments. So I'm gonna go ahead and quickly make it so that this guy is no longer a table. And the same with this guy. All right, so let's go back here and name it departments to make our life easier. And now we're almost good to go, but I wanna show you how this works before I do it. So let's make a range reference for this guy and I'm gonna zoom in just a little bit so you can see it. This is a table, so if I go equals and I select the entire column underneath this header row, look at it, it goes equals, departments, departments. Now this is the name of the table. So if I did not just rename this, it would be table three, just a generic table name. This right here is the header for our data. So departments right here. And it is this structure that is going to allow us to make our drop-down menus and our dependent drop-down menus. So when I hit enter now, I have Excel 365. It's going to fill in all of the data for this, accounting HR world domination for departments. But what we need to do is to get this reference nice and happy in data validation. 
and data validation is the great feature that's going to give us the drop down menu. So let's click this cell and go to data. And over here is data validation or alt DL on the keyboard. And we can go here and choose a list. That's what we want. Have in cell drop down checked and go down to source and let's paste this in and see what happens. Hit okay. It's not going to work. So what we have to do is a little trick. And we need to get this into our data validation list. And we're going to use a nice little function, the indirect function. What it says here returns the reference specified by a text string. That might be a little bit difficult to understand, but what it's going to do is it's going to spit out directly whatever we input here. So if I do this right now and hit enter, it gives us the same list that this one gave us right here. So that is the same as this basically, but we need this so that our list will work. So we copy this right now. We go back to here, alt DL, allow list, paste it in, don't hit anything else in this little source window, it's very easy to mess up, and then hit OK. And now we have our drop down menu, accounting, HR, world domination, and let's go ahead and add mining. And there we go. So the first one is working perfectly. Now let's create the second one. I'm going to delete this, but I'm going to go ahead and save this guy and just pull him up here for now. And let's go ahead and get this data so we don't have to type all of it in. And paste in the values. All right, so we just have plain text right here now. And I'm going to pull this guy out of the way down here. Let us remove mining and get it back to the way that it was. And now we're going to do the same thing with this that we did with the other one over here. So insert table. My table has headers. OK. Now we have a table and let's go ahead and rename it table design. Let's call this one department info. And the most important thing here, the thing you must understand is that the header here must be spelled exactly the same as the item right here. So accounting, accounting, HR, HR, world domination, world domination. It must be spelled exactly the same because we are going to kind of perform a lookup on this table's data using these values. And can you tell how we're going to do that? We are going to use this reference structure right here. So we are going to build a reference to this. So how do we build it to accounting? Well, we go equals, select the data for accounting. This is all that we need to build. Department info, accounting. Let's build it first using indirect equals indirect quotation mark, paste it in quotation mark, close it up a one, two, three. Okay. So far so good, but we want to get that dynamically from this drop down menu over here. So we want to replace hard coding accounting with a cell reference. And that cell reference will be the reference of the cell that has the first drop down menu in it. So I will delete this and we close up the quotation marks. So the first parts in quotes, ampersand. Then we select the cell that will have the drop down in it. Then we do another ampersand, then another quotation mark. That is the kind of crazy way to get a cell reference inside of indirect. So let's add some spaces. It'll be a little bit easier to see. And what we're doing here is just building a string, just building a text reference. That is department info accounting, department info HR, department info world domination. And since it's text, that's why we use all these quotation marks and then an ampersand to put the cell reference in the middle right there. So it looks funky, but just follow the pattern and you will be good. Hit enter. We're not going to get anything right now because mining is not on there. So let us select accounting. And there we go. A one, two, three. Let's test it for HR. Perfect. And now that we have that, all we have to do is to grab it, copy it, go up here, alt D L for data validation, list source, paste it in. Don't touch anything. 
hit OK. And now let's check it out. HR, HR2. Let's go for world domination again. World 1, 2, 3. All right, let's add back in mining. Make sure it got in over here. Perfect. Now, the easy way to avoid a misspelling is just grab this, copy it, and paste it in here to the right of this table. The table will automatically expand and add your options. Now let's go for Department Mining, Division, perfect. And once you have it down and working like this on one worksheet, go ahead and change the formatting as much as you want. Put it wherever else you want in the worksheet or another worksheet. If you don't like this formatting, just click in the table here. Go to Table Design. Go to Table Styles. Click this and take off the formatting. There's a lot that you can do here. You don't like these drop-down arrows? Go in here and uncheck Filter Button, and they're gone. So you can make this table look like regular cells if you don't like the default formatting. But now that you've got this, you've got a pretty darn cool automatically updating dependent drop-down list menu in Excel. I hope you liked the tutorial. If it was helpful, don't forget to give it a thumbs up and make sure to subscribe and accept notifications so you can see all the new tutorials.